fine uh let's uh, get on with today's section i mean session um am i audible to everyone can anyone respond hello Fine. Uh, I guess it's just the three of us. Let's uh, get on with today's uh, session. So yeah, uh, currently we are uh, looking at mass transfer. And uh, in mass transfer so far we have looked at distillation. We have looked at uh, adsorption and we have even briefly looked at fix, fix law. Okay. Uh, today we will be uh, looking at something called drying. Okay. So yeah, let us uh, get on with drying for today. So drying is the operation by which moisture is removed in relatively small quantities and it is removed from you know, solids usually solids or you know solid like materials and the main process that hap happens here is evaporation so before we uh, move on like there is one important thing that we need to note so there is actually a small difference between the process of drying and the process of evaporation so drying and evaporation so one of the biggest difference in drying and evaporation drying versus evaporation so the first difference is in evaporation the quantity of moisture being removed is in very large quantities While in drying, you know, the quantities are usually much, uh, you know, lower compared to evaporation. And evaporation occurs at boiling point. So if you want to evaporate water from uh, a mixture or something, the evaporation occurs only at the boiling point of water, which is at 100 degrees Celsius. But then drying can occur at even relatively lower temperatures. Okay. Yeah. So these are the main two difference I would suggest, I would say when it comes to, you know, drying versus evaporation. So one other difference that we can say is, you know, the vapor leaving an evaporator is generally pure water vapor. So like this is uh, in terms of the process of drying and evaporation. So in evaporation, whatever is leaving is only pure water vapor. But drying usually employs something like a carrier gas. 
like it could be either you know hot air and you know something or a flue gas or something like that so that can also be present from the outlet of a drying process so these are mainly the two uh, difference uh, three difference uh, between drying and evaporation so the next thing that we want, want to see is you know some terms uh, with related to drying so moisture so we have been looking at this moisture content so moisture content is basically kilogram of water which is usually said as kilogram of moisture per kilogram of dry solid then when it comes to moisture there are four different kinds of moisture first one we can call it as bound moisture so bound moisture you know sorry once again so bound moisture you know it is the amount of moisture in a solid okay what happened oh okay uh one second guys uh okay so yeah we we have four different kinds of moisture the first one is the so we have bound moisture which is basically the amount of moisture or water vapor in that sense which exerts a vapor pressure less than the normal vapor pressure of water at any given temperature so let's assume we have a solid like this and the, let's say this is a wet solid and it has a lot of you know crevices and cracks and all that stuff okay so there are moisture which will be present on the surface of this solid and then there will be moisture which are present inside the bulk of the solid so usually this would be in these cracks 
or basically in the bulk of the solid okay so this moisture which is present in the bulk of the solid can be vaguely termed as bound moisture and this bound moisture exerts a vapor pressure less than the normal vapor pressure of water then this moisture which is not bound by any uh, you know irregularities or like any uh, surfaces like for example uh, the moisture that is present on the surface we can call it as unbound moisture so this unbound moisture will exert a vapor pressure greater than the normal vapor pressure of water okay so basically it is easier to remove this unbound moisture compared to the bound moisture because this unbound moisture will exert a higher vapor pressure and it will get evaporated much easily compared to a bound moisture now the next term is equilibrium moisture equilibrium moisture is the moisture content in the solid in a solid that can remain in equilibrium with the drying medium of a given relative humidity at any given temperature okay and then there is a term called free moisture this free moisture is the moisture in a wet solid which is in excess of the equilibrium moisture it is important to note that only free moisture can be removed during a drying operations this equilibrium moisture usually cannot be removed by drying so in other terms this equilibrium moisture usually represented as x star is the end point for a drying process now let's look into the drying curve so a drying curve is basically a curve between the rate of drying with the moisture content of the wet solid so try it like this so this is moisture and this is rate of drying okay now let's say we are starting with the point a and the corresponding moisture content of this point a is xi which is the initial moisture content so this drying curve initially will go like this this is called the heating period and let's say it reaches a point b and from here the curve is flat and let's say it reaches a point c then it will start sloping down so it will the slope 
is usually straight in the beginning and then it will start curving a bit and finally it will reach a point where the rate is zero okay now as i said this xi is the initial moisture content the moisture content at this point c is called as critical moisture content is called the critical moisture content now uh, uh, keshav uh, can you mute yourself uh, i can hear a lot of background noise all right so yeah the moisture content at c is the critical point or the critical moisture and this moisture where the rate of drying is zero is called as the equilibrium moisture and that is represented as x star now this flat rate regime is called as constant drying regime or constant drying rate and this for this after this point c where the rate starts falling down this regime is called as falling rate yeah so the thing is the moisture content at which the rate shifts from constant drying to falling drying rate is called as the critical moisture content which is represented as xc here okay so we learnt a lot of uh, terms like the bound moisture unbound moisture okay uh, is it audible now am i audible now okay sorry about that yeah okay all right so yeah so we start from a and a to b is called as the heating period where we heat the solid to a given temperature and after it reaches b it will go to a flat rate where the flat rate is called as the constant drying rate and it will reach a point c from where it will the rate will start falling down and eventually it will reach zero so the point at which the rate starts falling down is the critical moisture content and the rate at which the the drying rate is zero is called as the equilibrium moisture content so we have learned a lot of uh, terms like bound moisture and bound moisture and so on so generally if we represent this uh, the for the constant rate regime usually takes care of the unbound moisture so all the moisture content uh, like which are very easy to remove is usually removed at this constant drying rate and the drying rate happens very fast and under falling rate regime usually the bound moisture gets removed now okay uh, to have a better clear idea let's do one thing okay all right now let's say the equilibrium moisture is somewhere like this okay so this is the equilibrium moisture and this falling rate right it like this all right so let's say this is the 
equilibrium moisture. So this is equilibrium moisture. So then the free moisture is basically from here to here. So basically the sum of unbound moisture and a part of bound moisture is the free moisture. So in a drying process, we can only remove this free moisture. We cannot remove this equilibrium moisture. Okay. Yeah. So this is the basics of drying rate curve. And most of the questions uh, in gate from drying usually comes from a drying rate curve. Okay. Now, so there, there are like you can derive a lot of equations and the main equations are basically the time required for drying. So let us look into that. So the time required. So let us say the time required for this constant drying rate and let us say we represented it as Tc. This Tc will be equal to W by A N C into Xi minus Xl. Okay. So let us say you want to dry up a, dry a solid where the moisture content varies from these two points, let us say 1 and 2. So you can use this equation to find the time required for this drying process to happen. So here this W is the dry weight of the solid. A is the drying area and NC is the drying rate which is constant. So this NC will be here. Okay. And if we write this uh, drying uh, you know, time for the points 1 and 2, it will be like TC is equal to W by a and C into X1 minus X2. Got it? Now, similarly, okay, we will uh, move to the next page. So, similarly, we can write the time required for falling rate. And that time will be represented as Tf, which will be equal to W by A, which is constant and okay, integral of Xi to Xf dx by N. So here also this N represents the drying rate. But the difference here is that Unlike in a constant rate regime where the drying rate was constant, in a falling rate regime, this drying rate is a function of the moisture in general cases. So this is the equation for drying rate under the falling uh, rate regime. So the total time required. Yeah, uh, have any doubts, Priyas? Okay, okay. So Xi represents the initial moisture content. And Xf represents the final moisture content after drying. Okay. So let's say you have a wet solid which has love somewhere around uh, initially it contains around 70% moisture. So this Xi will be 0.7. And you dry this uh, you know uh, wet solid and after drying you end up with let's say 40% moisture then this Xf will be 0.4. So this drying happens between 0.7 to 0.4 moisture contents. Okay. 
is it clear okay fine also one important thing thing to note that all this moisture content all this moisture content are on dry basis okay so do you know the difference between the dry basis and a wet basis okay so dry basis okay i'll start with wet basis so wet basis you represent kilogram of water by kilogram of wet solid okay so this is basically kilogram of water by kilogram of dry solid which is basically w in the formulas plus initial moisture content moisture content which is represented kilogram of water so this initial moisture content is xi in the formula so xi into the mass of water so this will be m water okay so this is a dry basis i mean sorry a wet basis so in a dry basis yeah so the dry basis is basically the moisture content without considering the initial uh, water content so this will be kg water by kg dry solid okay so this is the main difference between dry basis and a wet basis is this clear uh, do we need more explanations okay let's move on so yeah yeah uh, can you explain hmm. yeah sure let's uh, see mm, okay so let's say yeah so let's say you have uh, it is given that x let's say x is the moisture content on wet basis so let's say they have given that the initial wet basis moisture content is 60% okay now let's say you have 10 kg of wet solid okay can you guess how much in this 10 kg of wet wet solid with 60% wet basis moisture content will be the uh, you know kilogram of water plus kilogram of dry solid like you have been given 60 percentage of this is uh, you know water so you know 100 minus 60 will be 40 percentage of this as dry solid so now can you just you know say how much is the just calculate 60 percentage of 10 kg is uh, you know the water so how much will it, will it be so it will be 6 kg of water plus 4 kg of dry solid okay so together it will have 10 kg of wet solid so this is uh, an expression of the you know wet so uh, wet basis okay and when it comes to dry basis let's say the same 60% on dry basis for 10 kg 
with solid now we we know we said that you know uh, for dry basis it will be kg of water by kg of dry solid and this will be 60% or 0.6 okay so let's say here instead of uh, you know 10 kg wet solid it is 10 kg dry solid then this uh, we have been given the initial moisture content as 60% for a dry basis then this kilogram water by 10 kg will be you know 0 0.6 and kilogram of water will be you know what 6 kg so then here what will be the weight of the wet solid wet solid will be dry solid which is 10 kg plus water which is 6 kg and this wet solid will be 16 kg so now you can see like the difference here for the same moisture content expressed in different basis one in a wet basis and the other in a dry basis but then the numbers for for example the weight of the wet solid and the dry solid so these numbers are different so this is where this is the significance of you know wet basis and dry basis so i hope it is uh, like much more clear or somewhat clear okay fine it's more so here we looked at the time for the constant drying rate and falling uh, drying rate so the total time here will be tc plus tf which is the sum of the drying rate for a uh, falling rate plus the sum uh, time for the constant rate so this t will be tc plus tf and that will be w by a into x i minus x f let's say let let's take it as you know here x1 and x2 okay we'll we'll look into this in the uh, during the problems that's better okay all right so Total time is the sum of constant uh, you know, drying rate time plus falling drying rate time. So yeah, these are the basics uh, for uh, you know, drying. And uh, let's look into some uh, gate, previous gate questions and problems and maybe it will we'll get a more clear picture of how drying the process is and how questions come in drying part for gate. Okay. Let's move on. Do you have any doubts? Yes. Okay. Fine. Let's move on. Hello everyone, today Okay, so yeah, just read the question here So is the screen visible? So just uh, re go through this question. A fiberboard sheet, which is of the dimensions 1.5 meter into 2 meter into 15 mm, is being dried 
by suspending it horizontally in a current of hot dry air. The edges are insulated so that drying takes place only from the top and bottom surfaces. The wet sheet weighing 16 kg with initial moisture content of 60% loses moisture at a constant rate of 1.25 into 10 raised to minus 5 kilogram per meter square second until the moisture content falls to 30%. All the moisture contents are on dry basis. The time required for drying during constant rate period in hours is dash rounded off to third decimal place. Okay. Yeah. So, in the question, they are drying a fiberboard sheet or basically uh, something like a cardboard with the given dimensions 1.5 into 2 into 15 mm. And it is dried using a current of hot dry air by suspending it, suspending it horizontally. Okay. They are all they have also given that the edges of the uh, fiber boards are insulated. So let's say no, this is a fiber board. These edges are insulated, and the drying takes place only from this top part and this bottom part. Okay. And they have given that this wet, uh, you know, sheet is 16 kilograms by weight, which has an initial moisture content of 60%. And after drying, it comes to a final moisture content of 30%. Okay. They have also given that the drying rate is constant at 1.25 into 10 raised to minus 5 kilogram per meter square second. So they want us to find the time required for drying at this constant rate in hours okay so let's see how to solve this okay all right so yeah in these kind of drying questions it is always better you represent it pictorially using a drying curve. So they have given that it is a constant drying rate. So in the drying curve, so we have the you know, x axis as moisture and y axis as the rate and this flat line represents the constant drying rate. Okay. So the initial moisture content they have given as xi as 0.6 and the final moisture content xf they have given it as 0.3. Okay. Now the rate is also given as 1.25 into 10 raised to minus 5 kilogram per meter square second. So now they have given us almost all the details that we need to find the uh, time required for drying. So time required TC will be W by A N C into XI minus XF. Okay. So as, as they have mentioned, XI and XF are on dry basis. Okay, so that means they have given that initially this 0.6, 60% moisture on the wet solid is in a dry basis. So we have to convert this dry basis or we have to use this dry basis moisture content to find the dry weight of the solid which is represented by W. Okay, so given wet solid mass with 60% moisture on a dry basis is 16 kg. So we just saw how to find uh, the you know weight using a you know dry basis. Now you can use this formula to convert wet basis into dry basis. Like 
it's uh, you better make a note of this actually so xi the small xi is the moisture content on wet basis and the capital xi is the moisture content on dry basis so xi is equal to capital xi by 1 plus capital xi so this is the conversion which you can use to convert you know wet basis to dry basis and vice versa okay so now we want to find we want to find the wet basis moisture content using this dry basis moisture content so you, we have this formula now all we have to do is substitute the uh, values for the xi in dry basis to find the values for the wet basis understood okay so xi is equal to 0 0.6 by 1.6 and that will be equal to 0 0.375 okay this is the moisture content on wet basis you, you we can use this moisture content on wet basis to find the mass of dry solid which will be equal to mass of wet solid into 1 minus the initial moisture content so this moisture content xi is a fraction which we just got it as 0.375 so whatever is remaining in the uh, solid which is not moisture is the basically the dry solid part so just substitute these values so wet solid mass is 16 kilograms and moisture content is 0.375 we will get the mass of dry solid as 10 kg. Then we just go back to our formula and substitute these values. So now we got W as 10 kg. Now we just need to find the area for drying. So as previously mentioned, the area for drying is the top and bottom part of the fiber sheet. So they have given the dimensions, the length as 1.5 and the breadth as 2. So the area for top side will be 1.5 into 2. Similarly, the area for the bottom side will also be 1.5 into 2. So 1.5 into 2 plus 1.5 into 2, that will give you 6 meter square as the drying area. So this is the drying area for top plus the bottom part of the sheet. So just substitute all these values for W and A and NC and XI and XF in the equation for time. We will get TC is equal to 10 by 6 into 1.25 into 10 raised to minus 5 into 0.6 minus 0.3. And we just do this uh, calculation here. We will get TC as 40,000 seconds but we want this answer in hours so we just divide this by 3600 40,000 by 3600 which will give you the final answer as 11.111 hours so basically what we did here is this is pretty much a direct question we have been initially given the values for uh, for NC. We just had to calculate the area A for drying, the mass of dry solid W by the wet, uh, mass of wet solid and the initial moisture content. And we just had to substitute these values in the time equation and we will get the final answer as 11.111 hours. Is this clear? Okay.
let's uh, move on to one more question. Okay. Now this is a question from 2019 gate and it's basically a multiple choice theory question. So, in the drying of non-dissolving solids at constant drying conditions, the internal movement of moisture in the solid has a dominant effect on the drying rate during and the four options given are the initial adjust period only, the constant rate period only, the falling rate period only and D, both the initial and constant rate periods. Okay. So we will learn something here in this question and while we are answering this. So again, we will just go to the drying rate curve and we have the x-axis and y-axis as moisture content in the x-axis and rate n in the y-axis. So we have a flat line which represents the constant drying rate and the falling rate which ends at equilibrium moisture content x, x star. So we have this constant rate here and we have the falling rate here. Okay. Now let's assume we have a wet solid. So like previously we saw the bound and unbound moisture. So let's, uh, let's take a wet solid and we'll have a thin, very thin film of water which is present on the surface of this wet solid. Okay. And that wet thin film of water on the wet solid will get removed in the constant drying rate regime. So mostly a surface phenomena happens in the constant rate region or we, we term this as the unbound moisture. Now when it comes to the falling rate, so once all this uh, surface water gets evaporated, what happens is the moisture that is present inside this wet solid has to come out to the surface and then only it has to get dried. Okay, so the moisture present in the bulk of the solid has to come out from the bulk of the solid to the surface of the solid. So it has to come out to the surface of the solid and this coming out happens by two, uh, a few different forces basically, but two major ones are diffusion and capillary forces okay so by these two actions the moisture content present in the bulk of the solid will come out to the surface of the solid for drying and this happens in the falling rate so basically these mechanisms are generally termed as internal movement of moisture Okay, so that means this internal, the surface movement of moisture occurs at the constant rate regime and the internal movement of moisture occurs at the falling rate regime. So now we know the concept for this, we can just answer this question. So the answer will be the falling rate period only, which is option C here. So answer C, falling rate period only. Is it clear? Okay. Fine. Okay, it's seven o'clock. You wanna look into one more question or 
you want to wrap it up for today i'll leave the choice up to you okay fine we'll just look into one more question and then we'll wrap it up so yeah let's uh, go on okay okay so in a batch drying experiment a solid with critical moisture content of 0.2 kg water per kg dry solid so here you can see this moisture content is represented in dry basis with the unit kilogram of water per kilogram of dry solid and it is dried from an initial moisture content of 0.35 kg water per kilogram of dry solid so 0.2 is the critical moisture content 0.35 is the initial moisture content to a final moisture content of 0.1 in 5 hours okay in the constant rate regime the drying rate is 2 kg water per meter square hour the entire falling rate regime is assumed to be uniformly linear so that means the falling rate is basically a straight line the equilibrium moisture content is assumed to be zero x star is assumed to be zero we need to find the mass of dry solid per unit area in kilogram per meter square rounded off to the nearest integer okay so here in the last questions we only utilize the formula for the constant rate here we'll be using both the constant rate as well as the falling rate so let's go to the rate curve so we have the moisture and the drying rate in the x and y axis is so the constant rate as a flat line and here the falling rate is basically a straight line there is no curve involved in it. and the critical moisture xc is given initial moisture xi is given the final moisture xf is also given so xi is 0.35 xc is 0.2 and xf is 0.1 so let's what else is given the rate of constant drying okay yeah okay yeah so we we know we learned that the total drying rate a uh, total drying time will be the sum of the drying time at constant rate and the uh, time required for the falling rate so this total drying time here is given as 5 hours okay so this 5 will be equal to tc plus tf now the formula for tc is we uh, we we learned this formula just a few minutes ago so this is the formula for time required for constant drying rate similarly we learned the formula for the uh, falling rate as well so we can write that formula as well for the time for falling rate tf is equal to w by a integral xc to xf dx by n so this is the general expression for time in the falling rate regime okay so let's go to the constant rate regime uh, individually so we will look at these things individually so at constant rate we have this formula here so they have given that nc is 2 kg 2 kg per meter square hour 
So Tc is basically minus W by A into Xc which they have given as 0.2 and Xi as 0.35 by N which is 2. Just multiply and divide these and we will get Tc the time at constant rate regime in terms of W by A. So this W by A is the weight of the dry solid by drying area. So we need to find this W by A for the whole process. Okay. So now we just got this Tc in terms of W by A by just substituting the given values in the equation for time. We will do the same thing again for falling rate. So for falling rate, time Tf is given as W by A integral of dx by n from xc to xf. So as I said before, so as I mentioned before, this n in the falling rate, this n is a function of x. So what is this n in terms of x is what we need to find out here. So if we go to the uh, uh, no, drying uh, rate curve, this falling rate is basically a straight line starting from the points 0.2 and 2 and the bottom point represented as 0.1 and n. Okay. Okay. So basically this equation is in the form of y is equal to mx plus c because it is a straight line. Okay. So we can represent this sloping line as y equal to mx plus c. The c is basically 0 because uh, we are assuming the equilibrium moisture content to be 0. So the C will go to 0 and we can write this Y is basically N which is the rate and the small x is basically the moisture content x and we can write the equation here as N is equal to 10x or which is in the form of Y is equal to mx where m is equal to 10 is the slope of this line and we can find the slope by you know mathematical methods. So the slope will be 10. So n is equal to 10x. Just have, just have to substitute this uh, in the equation. So Tf is w by a integral 0.2 to 0.1 dx by 10x. And just have to integrate this. Okay. Integrate this from 0.2 to 0.1. And we will get and we can simplify this further as well. We will get W by A 1 by 10 ln 1 by 2. We can rewrite this ln 1 by 2 as ln 1 minus ln 2. ln 1 is 0 and ln 2 is 0.693. So just write this here. We will get the final answer for Tf in terms of Wa as Tf is equal to W by A into 0 0.0693. Okay. So now what we basically did here is we just found out the time for constant rate and falling rate in terms of W by A. Okay. Now what we have to do is we go to the total time required. The total time required is given as 5 which is Tc plus Tf. Just substitute the values for Tc and Tf here. And we will get a linear equation with the only variable as W by A. And we need to find this only. We need to find the value for W by A. Right. So just substitute these, uh, just uh, substitute the uh, you know, values for Tc and Tf in terms of W by A. And just rearrange this equation. We can find the value for W by A as 5 divided by 0 0.075 plus 0 0.0693.
and this will come and if we do this division and everything this value will come approximately as let's see 35 kilogram per meter square so this is what we need to find in this question here in kilogram per meter square we need to find the mass of dry weight mass of dry solid per area of dry weight. so just a briefing again what we basically have to do is we have to find tc and tf in terms of w by a and we have been given all the tools and uh, values necessary to do this so we can find tc in terms of w by a and tf in terms of w by a and then we just have to substitute this equation in the equation for total time so the total time to is 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 equal to 5 which is equal to tc plus tf and just substitute these values here and the only variable remaining will be w by a which is the mass of dry solid per unit area and we can find the final answer as 35 kilogram per meter square is this method clear okay it is uh, yeah like uh, i i feel like you know if you keep working out these problems these are these questions are basically you know uh, straightforward questions by just applying the um, you know time formula or the time equation for drying so most of the numerical question from drying will be based on these formulas only. So I think if, if you just keep uh, you know practicing these questions using this uh, formula, it will be uh, very easy to do in your gate exams as well. Fine. We'll uh, stop here for today's class. Okay. Slope. Okay. Uh, okay. We have. I'll show you how to find a slope once again. Okay. Let me just uh, switch the screens. So I'll just give you the basic uh, you know, concept of how to find slopes for these equations for any straight line I mean so so let's say you have a straight line like this okay this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis so any straight line can be represented by this equation y is equal to mx plus c. So this c here is basically the intercept of this line with the y axis. Okay. So in the previous drying question this was 0 because this line was going to 0. So yeah. So basically y equal to mx plus c and this c is the intercept this m is the slope now let's take two points here point a which is represented as x1 y1 and point b represented by x2 and y2 the equation for this y equal to mx plus c this slope m is basically y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 okay so let's say in the question here we had point 2 and 2 and we had point 1 and what was the value i think 1 i think okay so the slope m is basically you know uh, 2 minus 1 by point 2 minus point 1 because basically you know m is equal to y2 this y2 is basically or y1 whichever like you are taking so y2 we took is a took it as 2 
and y1 we took it as you know 1 this x2 is basically 0.2 and x1 is 0.1 okay so the slope m will be 2 minus 1 by 0.2 minus 0.1 which will be 1 by 0.1 and that will be 10 okay so the last uh, question y equal to mx plus c we said this c is 0 so this y is basically the rate n and this x is basically the moisture content on dry basis x so just substitute the value for slope here n is equal to 10 x this is how we got the equation for slope or the equation for the falling rate is this clear somewhat? Okay. Ah, okay. So in the question, uh, it is given that the uh, you know rate gets halved. So initially the rate was two, and the final rate gets halved, which will be one. Okay. So yeah. Right. So now it's clear, right? Okay. Fine. Let's uh, stop here for today. So this whole month we've been looking at mass transfer. Uh, for a change, uh, we'll uh, switch subjects next class. So we'll uh, start with CRE mostly. So have you learned, uh, you know, CRE in your uh, classes? A chemical reaction engineering, I mean. Okay, good. Uh, so we'll uh, start with CRE. Um, we'll actually try to go from the scratch, uh, like you know, according to the textbooks and the syllabus. So we'll start from the rate equations, you know, the order of the reaction, and we'll uh, try to go in order for CRE. So I know, like uh, you know, this uh, mass transfer, we have been just looking at random, you know, uh, concepts from here and there. We'll try to go in an orderly fashion for CRE. So, yeah, that's it for today, I guess. We'll uh, stop here and I'll see you next Monday. No. Yeah, thank you. See you on Monday.